All right, so if you're looking to turn your Sony FX30 from something that looks a little bit like this into something that looks a little bit like this, then this might be the video for you because we're gonna be talking about the Sony FX30 Cinema Rig Build. Now this is going to be an accessory guide for all the tools that I use in terms of putting the C back in Cinema Camera. Cinema Camera already had a C in it. Actually, it has two Cs in it. We'll just get started. Now, first things first, we're gonna go with getting a cage on this thing. And I'm actually using the tilt -a cage for the Sony FX3. Now, I have a bunch of other Sony FX3 accessory videos, but just know that a lot of the accessories on the FX3 fit on the FX30. And if you guys wanna check out some other videos, there are some somewhere on the screen. But I'm gonna be using the tilt -a cage as the base for the Sony FX30. Now, it does have this kind of fancy tool thing that you can get with it. Now, what's cool about this is I thought there wasn't a place to actually put that little like screwdriver tool in, but there's actually a little magnet on the bottom right here that it sticks to. So it's very unlikely that you'll end up losing it. And it's helpful that there's a magnet at the bottom so you don't have to find a coin or a set of keys to actually screw the cage into the camera. Now, if we wanna get a top handle in here, we actually have to use this little plate over here. It has a cold shoe on the top and because it's for the FX3, FX30, there's two screws on here that actually connect and screw into the top of the camera. Now that the cage is set up, we can start to put in our top handle. Now, Tilta does make a top handle specifically for its cage system that fits in the cold shoe, and it actually screws in so it doesn't fall out. Now, usually I'll use a NATO rail system because I find it a little bit more secure, but the fact that you could actually screw this guy in means that it's gonna be very unlikely that this will fall off or wiggle around when I'm using the camera in handheld. We also have this small rig monitor mount, which is gonna go at the top of the top handle, which we're gonna use for the monitor of choice we're gonna use a little bit later on. Now, on top of this monitor mount, we're actually gonna use our Atomos Ninja 5. Now, with the Ninja 5, the raw output on the Sony FX30 hasn't necessarily come out yet. I've tried it, doesn't really work very well. But when it does, I'm going to be able to externally record in raw on this camera. And I wanna be ready and prepared for it, so I've actually paired a T5 SSD drive by Samsung to the Atomos Ninja 5, so I have enough data and have enough space to store the raw codex when I get there. On top of that, if you wanna screen record and save it to a drive, or you wanna just record in ProRes to make it easier in editing, you could do the same thing with the Atomos Ninja 5 with an SSD attached to it. Just for reference, I am using a small rig HDMI cable. They're fairly cheap, they're thin, they're inconspicuous, and it doesn't cause a lot of trouble. Now, before we start getting other accessories on there, it's important that if we're gonna use a cinema camera, we're gonna probably need cinema lenses. Now, I do still use the Sony G Master and G series of lenses, but I've really been feeling the DZO Vespid Primes for the last little bit. Now, this is a 25 millimeter T2.1, and unfortunately, it doesn't actually have an E-mount. So what I'm gonna actually end up using is going to be the PL to E mount adapter that's also made by DZO Film. Now these fit really nicely and because this lens is fully manual, I don't have to worry about autofocusing contact points. It is a full manual lens, but it does look really good. Next, we're gonna need a base plate. And I honestly don't like spending a lot of money on base plates because I find that 200 bucks just to make sure I get something on a tripod and hold rods into it is a little bit overkill. So I actually went with the small rig base plate, the basic one that goes for pretty much any camera. Now all I have to do is screw this into the bottom of my camera. Now I actually use two quarter 20 thread mounting screws to go to the bottom of the cage. That way it's nice and secure. If you rotate the camera around, the screw's going to come loose and your camera rig is going to start to fall apart. Now our camera's secure in our base plate, now it's time to attach rods to put more accessories on it. And honestly, these are a little bit overkill. They're a little bit too long. These are like foot and a half rods by small rig. Honestly, I would go with a 12 inch version or even something a little bit smaller, but these are gonna be great for actually mounting on more accessories, like having a V-mount battery plate, uh, follow focus, or even a matte box if you have matte boxes that need these. Now, if you haven't noticed, I did get the Sony FX30B, which means I don't have the audio top handle attached, which also means I need to have a pretty decent microphone. That's why I went with this guy. This is the Sennheiser MK400 microphone that's gonna work on a 3.5 millimeter jack with cameras just like the Sony FX30. Now, I used to use a lot of mics, especially the video NTG mic, but after a couple of mishaps, I, I just don't mess with Rode anything anymore. Now I'm somebody that shoots handheld and I want a little bit more stability. And that's why I'm gonna use this combination. 
This is a wooden handle by Small Rig, and I'm also going to use an RE Rosette adapter that's going to go on the side of the cage. Now, the RE Rosette adapter has to go on first because the attachment that the side handle has in order to get it on the camera. They're fairly easy to use, they're not incredibly expensive, but this is one of those features that it makes my handheld shooting just a little bit easier. Now, because we're using cinema glass on a cinema camera, pulling your own focus is gonna be a skill you're just going to need to have. And to make your life easier, we're gonna use a follow focusing system with hard stops to prevent you from overshooting or undershooting your focus. Now, I'm not gonna to talk too much about the tilt to follow focusing system because I think this is maybe the fifth or sixth time I've talked about it, but we're gonna pair this on the DZO 25 millimeter T2.1. Essentially, it's just gonna help with getting better manual focus. Now, one thing the Sony FX30 doesn't have is built-in NDs. And with this system, it hits two birds with one stone. Not only are you gonna get a matte box, but you're gonna get an ND filter set up in it as well. And that's gonna be the Tilta Mirage system. Now I like this system because you could put in not only one, but two different filters on top of here. And you also have a ND filter that's built into the matte box system. So that way you don't have problems with getting your exposure. And then you also don't have to fumble around looking for circular ND filters all the time as well. And come on, it looks cool. If you wanna look professional, get a matte box. Just like my base plate, I don't like spending a lot of money on things like V-mount battery plate. So I got a cheaper one from Small Rig that's just gonna go on the back of these 15 millimeter rods. And this is gonna hold my FX Lion Nano 2 battery. It does hold a charge for a pretty long time. I get about three hours per battery life on one of these on my Sony FX6. I haven't really ran the battery on the FX30 just yet, but if it draws any less power than my Sony FX6, I think I'm in pretty good hands. Now, something I neglect doing is talking about cables, particularly the power cables for my cinema rig. And to be honest, it's because some of the cables I just picked up from other lighting systems that I have spare in my room. But this is gonna be like a DC to DTAP little cable that's gonna power my monitor. But it also has this little screw hole at the bottom here which coincidentally fits exactly perfectly to the back of the Ninja 5 in order for it to hold secure in place and it doesn't fall out when I'm handheld shooting all the time. Now we have everything set up for the cinema rig for the Sony FX30 except for one thing and that's how to power everything and get the camera on and that is just a regular USB-C cable. The fact that you could actually power this camera with a USB-C cable means it's a heck of a lot easier to get things to turn on. You don't have to worry about long extension cables. You can pick up a USB-C cable that can hold a charge on Amazon, and it's a nice affordable way to connect to your V-mount batteries if you have a USB connection to them. That being said, this is a complete tour of my cinema rig build for the Sony FX30. Now I did use a lot of the accessories that I use on the Sony FX3 and you could probably do the same thing as well. Now rig your camera for any reason isn't just meant to look cool, although it kind of does, but it's also meant to solve the problems of the shoots that you have on the day. So whether you're someone that shoots in handheld or you shoot on a gimbal or you shoot in a studio setting, rigging out your camera is going to be something that's meant to help you and not hurt you. So all of these accessories here is going to make my workflow a little bit easier, make my life a little bit easier when I'm shooting in handheld. And also the fact that you could rig something out like this adds a little bit more weight to the camera for stabilization and other things. That being said, all the links for all the accessories are in the description down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.